It's so scary. It's like you're awake, but you're asleep and yeah. you can't move. And I, there's been times where I've like felt like bad spirits around me and it's really scary. On today's show, I'm joined by a very special guest, Katya Gleason, an artist, healer, and social media personality. Kat, how are you? I'm good. I'm glad I wore this sweater. <laughs> I, I was like, love it's it. so, yeah, it's, it's like so appropriate to the show. I'm so excited you're here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about you today before we get into the true crime stuff. Cool. So, how did you amass 7 million followers on TikTok? Like, you're so amazing. Um, I, yeah, I don't even know. I just started making videos to make people laugh mm -hmm. and people laughed either at me or with me <laughs> and they decided I'm going to, I'm going to follow this girl wherever she goes. I want to keep laughing at her. Do you like making people laugh and do you like scaring people too? Uh, I definitely prefer to make people laugh because as you mentioned, I am very into healing. So I love Aww. that you guys talk about the paranormal. I love this setup here. Yeah. Um, I love the crystals and the sage. Uh -huh. So, um, so yeah, laughter is, is healing. I find that it's, um, it's a way that we can all unite. It's a way we can relate to each other. It's a way we can break down barriers mm -hmm. and not take ourselves so seriously. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's yeah. actually very true. And I am a big fan of yours. And I seriously, I, you know, I find you hilarious. Oh, my God. But um, I do have to ask, do you um, like horror? And if you or ever have experienced any paranormal activity, as we like to call it? Oh, my gosh. I get um, sleep paralysis. Do you ever no experience way. that? I haven't personally. It's the worst. It's so scary. It's like you're awake, but you're asleep and yeah. you can't move. And I, there's been times where I've like felt like bad spirits around me. And it's really scary because you can't move your body because oh. your body's like in paralysis, but you're kind of half awake, half asleep. Right. Yeah. A lot of people that experience this, um, I don't know, phenomenon are thing um they they say that sometimes they see black shadows or even yeah. like black cats or something on their chest have you do you experience that with your sleep paralysis or i felt it feels dark i i wouldn't say i see dark i would say that i feel it like it you can feel darkness around you and like pressure on your chest i guess just because the veil is kind of lifted between the conscious and the unconscious. So you mm -hmm. have access to those who are no longer alive. Oh my God. But yeah, I, I love paranormal stuff. I, I definitely think that I've had experiences, but I get scared like telling people because I think people think I'm crazy. No, no, don't. <laughs> I mean, is there one you would like to share? Like probably like the non crazy, crazy one. I mean, um, I, Oh, I don't, I don't want to like upset because I know this is something to do with my family. Um, but I did, I had an experience mm -hmm. um, with some Colombian elders with a thing called ayahuasca. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay. I know, I know. And it's, yeah, you have to kind of look into it. And we, we, we were guided through the process by Colombian elders um, while we had the medicine. And at the time, my aunt was going to pass away soon mm. um, and I took I walked with her until the end of where she could no longer bring me with her um, and we said goodbye and then the next day I called my mum and I'm like hey how's my aunt and she's like she she just passed Holy like, like that night and I was like oh my goodness I was there I was there I was there with her and it was like one of the most, I mean, whether it was in my head and I've been able to come to peace with um, her passing through that experience or whether it was real, um, it felt very real and it freaked me out. But like, yeah, it was, it was really beautiful. Yeah, no, that sounds yeah. beautiful. And it, it, was, sounds it was, it was, yeah. I, I could like see the room. I saw my whole family around her, like who was around her at the time. It was just like, woo. <laughs> 
Wow, Katia, that's a that's really crazy. I really have been wanting to try ayahuasca because it says that it really opens like a realm. And some, for some people, it's really life changing. Yeah, yeah, it's a really life changing experience. I felt like it just kind of validated what I felt is real about what happens after we pass or like what happens in the spirit world. I just kind of felt validated. I was like, oh, yeah, that that makes sense such a like topic that people are like no no like there's because there's so many skeptics but I think now that we're entering more of a spiritual journey I think people are experiencing more spiritual awakenings yes and stuff. I've noticed that so I think people it's more, are really open yeah now. so I think people are now um are coming to an age or, or we're um coming to an age as, as a collective humanity where we're being more open-minded about these kind of things so I don't think they'll think anything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but, at least your audience here knows what they're coming yeah. to, to so, see. Yeah, we're not wackos, guys. We're totally normal girls. It's all right. We're fine. We just we loved recharging our crystals and programming them with positivity. That's yeah, all. exactly, exactly. So today we want. Uh, why did I slam that table so hard? I love it. <laughs> yeah. So today we're gonna be getting into um, Gabby Petito story. Um, today we're gonna be getting more into true crime and. Um, she's, you're a huge influencer, so, um, this can, this is very relatable to it, and I think, um, this, this crime devastated America, and, you know, and it's, the, the thing that, re like, I, I think hurts us, and I think, um, makes, it makes it so, um, uh, eerie is the fact that it happened so recently. It's, it's definitely the worst case scenario of, of how something like this can unfold in a toxic relationship. Absolutely. It's, yeah. Absolutely. And, and I mean, to the families is just so devastating. The families yeah. and, the, and the friends of these people. Like, yeah. I can't imagine how horrible it must feel mm -hmm. to go through this. Um, yeah, but it's just, it's, I guess just during COVID as well, it's kind of eerie because we're all isolated and we're kind of stuck with, one or two people and good point you know you need to make sure that you're safe with who you're with um, yeah and people need to keep their eyes and ears open for red flags wherever they can because right now everyone's like in this state of like could just snap at any point because we're just being pushed so far beyond our limits exactly and I think you bring up really good points and that's I think a question that a, a lot of people might be asking like why did Gabby Petito stay? Because she was there willingly, and I think she really did love Brian. Yeah. And I think what I think is like, did she see the red flags? And I honestly don't think she did. I honestly think that the, it was a very coercive relationship, a very insidious um, relationship. But I think um, she was very much groomed. She was very yeah. psychologically. Um, manipulated um, because I think before there's um, it w there was obviously domestic violence in that relationship but in order for there to be domestic violence there has to be um, psychological violence first it's like exactly it's like that's the gateway before domestic violence and I think um, with Gabby um, what what makes me be what makes me think is um, did she have a trauma bond with him or did she have a love addiction to him? There's just so many questions and we really will never find out. But that's what makes me think is I really do believe that Gabby thought she was safe with Brian, even though he was doing these things to her. We don't know the full, uh, the full relationship when it actually started. But the fact that he was already being violent to her and she didn't, leave or go back to her parents and she thought she was safe with him is so scary that and it's so common right now and I think yeah. you mentioned that you know with co with um, COVID still on the rise um, domestic violence has gone up and it is just it, it's it's common right now and yeah. it's like it's not just Gabby Petito it's so many other women. Yeah, there's and and there's so many other people out there. I, I have had the opportunity to talk to a lot of women that have been in domestic violence situations or escaping those sorts of situations. 
Um, and, and it all kind of does happen in the grooming process mm. because we're presented with a person and I've been groomed before, I've, I've dated violent people before and I know what it's like to be in a circumstance where you've seen the best of a person and they show you this person that's amazing and wonderful and they make your life complete um, and then you're just, you're always referring back to that person. You're like, mm. if I could just get that person back, Right, of Because course. that person is amazing mm -hmm. and I love them so much and they're amazing and I know I see the best in them and I think that may have been perhaps what she was just waiting for. Just mm -hmm. for every him. now and then, if she just gave enough or self-sacrificed enough, then that person that she was shown at the beginning, at the grooming phase, mm -hmm. will come back just mm -hmm. for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, it's, it's a process that a lot of abusive people do. I know that the narcissist is such a trending thing right yeah, everyone's, now. Everyone's overusing that word. Yeah, now. I'm like... Some narcissists are, are, are good traits. Yeah. Sometimes narcissism yeah. is a good trait and a healthy trait. Yeah. So, yeah, we need to... Yeah, but um, honestly, I really think he, he did... He did um, and I'm not labeling him, so I'm going to say he had symptoms of um, antisocial personality disorder for sure. There yep. were symptoms of that because he remained so calm, so cool that I'm like, oh, yeah, he's definitely, definitely like one of those guys that don't get like bothered. And that's the kind of calm and coolness you see in other because we can't say psychopath or anymore. That's the new thing. I guess, uh, but you saw when like you they, you see interviews with like Ted Bundy or with mm -hmm. um, uh, Ed Kemper, you know, there when they asked them about like you know murders or um, or um, you know or the these violent acts that they do, they were literally staring the whole time, cool and calm, laughing, very cool about it. So honestly, I would not be surprised if you know, if if he was still alive, which was tragic that he ended up committing suicide, because they were both young, and I don't ever yeah. wish death upon anyone, but the way he was talking, so cool and collected, with like no empathy, and was just Yeah, it's, it's creepy, right? Exactly. Like when people talk like that. Same exact yeah. way. So I, I definitely can see some sociopathic or some antisocial, yeah, the antisocial one, definitely there so I mean it's a very very scary place to be in and yeah I, I think definitely I believe that somebody can psychologically damage you enough to the point where you you're no longer seeing anything other than oh, I absolutely. love this guy and honestly blame yourself because I think that there was some gaslighting for sure there too absolutely I mean I mean that's how you end up with one person being completely like hyped up and, and seeming like they're crazy and the other person's cool, calm and collected going, I don't know, she's just crazy. Exactly. But yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's, it's hard. And I know as, as a person who has, I have issues with like codependency. Mm -hmm. So she may have been a codependent empath as well I and agree. codependent empaths do seek out more toxic people because we kind of want to save them. Mm -hmm. We have something to learn from them too to get stronger and mm -hmm. yeah, so it's like she just ended up with someone a little more toxic than she thought. Yeah, that's for sure. What did you think? Uh, the thing that I was really, um, I couldn't find the connection and I thought was weird to me because to me everything made sense about this case, this very tragic case that I wish would have never happened, but I was very confused about a Brian's suicide. They never found a rope, they never found a gun, and they found his skeletal remains. Yeah, that was, that's odd, because I was like, how, I mean, scientifically, I'm trying to look up how quickly can a body decompose and get to that, mm. that point, and I'm like, how, how did it get to that straight mm. away? Yeah, and, and did, and he doesn't, I just, didn't read him as someone who would commit suicide. So I don't, I, I'm not sure, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's hard because it's like, I, mean, I haven't seen any autopsy reports or anything like that. So I don't, all, all it says is like, oh, he committed suicide, but it's like, well, okay. Yeah, 
they say i mean honestly from what i from what i saw is that is that people said that he committed suicide but to me it's like a mystery that's it's, to me it's not a case closed i guess it's something now that we all have to just deconstruct and learn and get better and make sure that other people don't go through this again like right. that other people see this maybe maybe other women will see it and have a little more strength and faith in other people and reach out and get help yeah so that it doesn't happen yeah that's a really good way of putting it so like like what else can we do with tragedies like this right especially if like to honor people's memories is to just make sure that we make progress that's uh, you know what that's actually a really good point because even if the case does get solved and somebody does say you know what i actually think that this is actually what happened because even if the police say you know it actually he didn't commit suicide or whatever um um it's not going to bring gabby or brian back and like i yeah. said it to me it's both a tr- tragedy for both families and both young people losses even if he was a not that great of a person um the best i think when we face a tragedy is to learn and learn how to speak up and hopefully get more help for people and i just think we need to learn to be there for each other i agree like we've we've now become so disconnected and yes. so within our own problems and in our own worlds that we just don't even look at what someone might be going through anymore. Right. So I think we just need to notice. Right. Yeah. Kat, honestly, <laughs> the way you see things is so beautiful. I love I, you. Oh my You're gosh, amazing. I love you too. <laughs> like seriously, you have such a big heart and I can I I really do see how you're an empath and honestly, yeah. Honestly, it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> it is, no, it is a blessing and a curse. I trust me, I, I, I get those feelings too. Yep. I, I, I call myself an indigo child. I feel like I'm an indigo I'm child. I'm a crystal child. Ah! Hey! Here's our spiritual side. You're the warrior yeah. paving the way. Um, but um, <laughs> thank you for sharing your thoughts on. I know it's it, it's a little hard to talk about, you know, such a you know crime that just happened and su- such a young person, but. Like yeah. you said, um, I think the, the you ended it in such a beautiful way, and I think um, I hope that we come together, like I said, in a collective way and and learn to be um, better. Yeah, we got to connect again. We got to yeah. figure out how to make that work. Yeah. <laughs> we got to figure that out. Yes, we do. Thank you so much, Kat, for coming. Thank on. you so much for having me. Yeah.